Hello team, my name's Ben and let's talk cardiac axis. Cardiac axis is the average direction that the electrical current passes through the heart. So if we set up a wheel of direction and if we have zero degrees being straight in towards the left, 180 towards the right and then positive 90 straight down, negative 90 straight up. And then if we put a heart on top of that, then you'd expect the direction of travel of the impulse would be from the top to the bottom. So 90 degrees. But you've got to remember our heart is kind of on a tilt to the left. So therefore our axis will generally tilt slightly to the left. The other thing that is going to influence it is the left side of our heart is bigger, so more muscle, so therefore the current is going to deviate a bit more towards that bigger side of the heart. So our normal axis is between negative 30 to positive 90 degrees. Okay, now how do we calculate this on our patient? First thing we can do is if we look at lead one, lead one sits at zero degrees, it's looking in that direction. So if we look at the QRS complex, and if it's mostly bumping upwards, if it's more positive than it is negative, then most of that current is going toward lead one. So if we look at this diagram and we shade in that side, then we know the axis is gonna be somewhere in that direction. Okay, then if we look at lead AVF, AVF was looking from about positive 90 degrees, so right underneath. And if we look at the QRS complex, if it's mostly up, that means the direction of travel is going toward that positive electrode. So then we can shade in from zero to 180 down and the axis is gonna be somewhere there. If it's mostly negative, we know the direction of travel is mostly away from lead AVF. So we can shade in the top of our diagram. Now, when we've looked at one and AVF, we look where they cross over and overlap, and that's gonna give us where our axis is gonna be. Awesome. If you don't wanna go shading in diagrams, we can just look at our thumbs. So on our left side, this is lead one, and our right side is going to be lead AVF. When we look at our lead one, if it's mostly positive, keep our thumb up, if it's negative, we're gonna keep our thumb down, and then we look at AVF and do the same. Mostly positive, thumb up, mostly negative, thumb down. So now we can just look at these and have a look at what our axis is. So if we've got two thumbs up, this is gonna be a normal axis. If we've got our left thumb up, right thumb down, then this left one, we've got left axis deviation possibly. If it's the other way, so left down, right up, we've got right axis deviation. And if they're both down, either we put our leads on wrong or we've got extreme axis. All right, team, happy studying. Hey, Ben, you said possible left axis deviation. Okay, extras for experts. So the reason we said possible left axis deviation is because if we look our normal axis can actually go to negative 30 to positive 90. So when we're calculating that way and we got possible less axis deviation, then we're also including that zero to negative 30. So it could still be normal if it hit that wedge. So what we can do to confirm is we can look at lead two, which sits at 60 degrees, which is right in that middle. So therefore, if lead two is positive, then we can shade that bottom half of the diagram and that's gonna include the negative 30. So now we know it's normal. If lead two is negative, then we're looking at the other half of the diagram. So therefore, we do have left axis deviation. But just doing your thumbs up, thumbs down is good enough in the pre-hospital setting. All right, have your studying, thanks.